Welcome everyone to our week five communications, documenting our tribal knowledge. And like we've done in all the other ones, for those of you who have be their first time or have watched some of them online and not necessarily live, I definitely like to start with a poll. And our poll today, our first poll is, how does your staff know about what leads you offer? Give me a second. I'll drop this uh, up here. We'll launch it for you. So how does your staff know what leads to offer? So tell me, how do you communicate with your staff? Sorry, don't have any Jeopardy music here to play, but it uh, shouldn't take you too long here. What? Nobody, nobody does not number four? Really? I thought that was going to be the winner. Oh, shocker. Uh, just a little over half of you. Okay, smart Alex, somebody clicked it. Um, we got about three quarters of you voting there. Let me uh, give one, oh, almost there, almost. Hey, look at that, we're almost at 90%. Give you just a five more seconds here. See who's paying attention, who's not. All righty, okay, I'm gonna close that here real fast. Show you re the results. Oops, you want to close that and share your results. There you go. It's pretty much split. We use pretty much the same schedule of a year versus uh, the evenness to we have a team meeting at the start of the season, uh, and the staff is instrumental to creating the leagues. Uh, that's all good stuff. It really isn't a wrong answer there, except for maybe the last one. And I'm sure some – I'll go back and see who clicked on that one to be uh, kind of a uh, humorist today. So we'll move in. Thank you for your participation. It's my way of getting you guys woken up. Those of you on the West Coast just rolling out of bed. Now, we're prior sometimes are a little slow there. But, hey, I mean in the times of you know working late nights. Don't Don't get me wrong. So now let's move into uh, our traditional agenda here. Let's talk a little bit about systems and what they are and why do they matter. And why do we have a system of league bowling? And as you've, if you've sat in on any of the other ones, this is a little bit of review. But, hey, we know people are going to look at these just as uh, individual pieces too. So we'll cover this each and every time. Systems matter. Um, we're also going to talk about the overview of league bowler development system. And then we're going to put it into practice. We're going to cover just some two quick hits as we go away and then give you some takeaway and steps that you can implement right away. So a system. A system is a way to help you document your unique way of doing business. Think of it. We have 3,400 members in the BPAA. Uh, and, 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 and there's 3,400 different ways of doing it. Uh, so... What can you do to have it done consistently and predictably every day by every person? You got to have some systems, some policies, procedures in place so that they get it done the way you want to do it. And, and we're going to talk specifically about that today. You put the systems in place so the systems can run the people and then people run the systems. Systems, excuse me, systems run the business and people run the systems. Uh, the people come and go. And you can plug in people as long as the systems remain consistent. As the business owner, systems set you free so that you can work on your business and not so much in your business. And I've said it many, many times. If you're working 90% in your business, we want to get that number down lower. If we can get that to 70% in your business and give you 30% of your time working on your business, that's better than where you are today. If you're at 10% working in your business and 90% working on your business, hey, wouldn't it be great to get that even 5%? So our goal is to grow to grow your business by you giving you the ability to work on your business by having your staff working your business by working the systems. And that's why the system of league bowling was created. You get to be, you get to stop being a slave to your business and transform it. 
so that you can have a profitable, predictable turnkey operation. Think about who uses systems. Corporate environment has to use a system. They have to keep everything working. The larger you get, the more it's, impo it's important to have. And franchise locations. Think about every McDonald's, every Chick-fil-A you go into, and you think about the system. When you ask for anything, for those of you in an area that has Chick-fil-A, when you ask for something, they don't, they don't say – I'll get it for you. It's my pleasure to get it for you. That's a system that's in place. That's a policy procedure that they have in place. But we don't necessarily have a lot of systems in the bowling industry because, A, we're, we're relatively small. With uh, in, You think about three, four, five thousand bowling centers around the country. Uh, only under 3,400 of them are members within the BPAA. And only 10% are corporate owned. When you think about the, the whole merger of the two large corporations, there's still only 10% uh, of that of the overall industry. And we have no franchise model. So we, as individuals, create our own systems that help our business grow. So as we've gone through this, we've talked about league structure, we've talked about staffing, we've talked about benefits and recognition, we've talked about started with marketing. But today, we're going to talk about communications. And then I'm going to show you today and also next week, we're going to talk about the files that are available for you at the BPAA.com website. So let's dive into communications. We're only going to take a little slug at just two pieces of this 40-some this page piece that you can download. You'll see it there if you open your little orange bar, uh, the little orange arrow on your side of your screen. You'll see there's a download there. That is the PDF that you can download. I'm going to show you how to download it at the end of this uh, from the website if you need to find it again. But just to make it easy for you, we have those uploaded here on the website. And for those of you who are watching this on recording, you'll have to go to the website as I'll just show you at the end. So our two quick hits today are the concept of communication and how important it is, and then the league callback system and how it works. And I have to tell you a little bit of a personal note. I thought I was a good communicator, but no, really, I was a good talker uh, until I, uh, my son started growing up. And anybody who's ever been a parent knows exactly what I'm talking about when you're talking about your kids and what you want the room to look like and what they perceive the room to look like. You wanted it cleaned. They go in there, and they've just moved some clothes around. Uh, you didn't say pick up your clothes, put them into the drawers, or put your clothes away. You didn't very specifically tell them what you wanted. I certainly, I personally have a son who has Asperger's, so he's quite literal in what you say, and it has taught me how to be a much better communicator than I ever thought I was. I'm good at talking, but communicating is a different story. So let's talk about that a little bit. Communication is the process by which information is exchanged between individuals. That's by definition. Okay, great. But we want to make sure that the information is given and received. I used to have a student when I was uh, working in the centers in Raleigh that we, I would make her repeat back to me what I just said. And, and quite often, it was not exactly as I was intending. So that created a whole dialogue of this is what I meant. This is what I said, is that's not what you said. Well, you're right. I didn't, I said this, but I meant this. So again, she teaching me how to communicate. We're going to talk about that. Here's a good example. The concept of communication. You say, let's make sure, Susie, that we call back league bowlers and find out if they're coming back. Let's start today, okay? Susie says, okay, we'll do. The result, Susie calls back the bowlers in the leagues and reports the following to you. I called most of them back. They said we we're coming. Others weren't sure. I left message for the others. Looks like we're going to be okay. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Sound like anything that's happened in your center before? I uh, have to say, I've been there, done that, had the same response, pulled my hair out. As those of you who know me well, uh, most of the hair in the front is almost gone. And I'm wondering if it is Susie's fault. So what, what you meant was, well, this wasn't what you meant. We know that we wanted her to, to, to call back the bowlers, find out their intentions for the upcoming season, and record the results of the call in a simple format 
and to update it daily as she completes the call. For those people that she left voicemails, you want her to keep trying them and, and get back with them. You probably also wanted her to call the team captains, league secretaries, and specifically the dropouts. But none of this happened because we assumed. And there's a great 80s movie about that, so we're going to uh, move on. She knew exactly what you meant, and you assumed that she understood your communication. And as I mentioned about my student as teaching her how to bowl, I had her repeat back to me what I wanted because that was my only way of communicating in a, a verbal dialogue. Well, when you have a system in place and you have the documentation, what they want to have filled out, all that changes because she did not understand your communication. When you have a good communication, Communication is always created by the receiver. So you have to have an understanding that they understand. And so that the sender should never assume that the receiver knows what the sender means. So me as the instruction instructor or me as the manager or proprietor of the center, we can't assume that they know what we mean. Under coaching, over coaching, great, great piece in the the, the movie uh, Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder. He assumes that Igor knows about what brain to get. If you guys have seen that movie, great, great scenes there. So as you're going through this, we have solutions. Repetition is vital to communication, and the more, the better. We have to make sure that the noise that's going on around is uh, pulled away and that the message gets through. You have to repeat it over and over and over again so that this, the employee knows exactly what we're looking for. And having some documentation that they have to complete so that they can see how they've completed it is a great way of doing that so we gotta kinda, we kind of have to coach them along the way and that's where the league callback system comes into place so so let's do another poll here really quickly and tell me how does your center do league callbacks threw you for a little loop this time I actually gave you a uh, a second poll to see who's actually paying attention, who's here. Wake up. Those of you who have been checked out doing your emails and checking your Facebook, time to do a poll. Got about halfway there. Got a few more checking out. I'm going to start calling you out by name. I can see who you are. That's a good threat. All right, there we go. Now you got it. And this is a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. We got about, oh, look at that, 83% of our attendees today have do a call and a postcard to all the prior year bowlers. Can we go, who goes back a couple more years? Uh, I know that one of the things that we've done has gone back three years. And if you, if you look in your uh, customer connect program, you'll see that you actually have data that you can get back from USB-C downloaded straight to your customer connect all the way back for three full years. So something to consider. So good stuff. Good stuff. Let me hide that real quick and move on. So as we put in practice, lead callback systems, establish your callback direct marketing. And unfortunately, the system exists to call your league bowlers and determine if they are coming back for the next season. While many centers left this part of their marketing to their league secretaries, and I see by your results, most of you don't do this. This is great. We caution against that tactic, those of you who still do it, simply because it's your center's customers, your center's league bowlers, and your center's business. Why would you leave that up to anyone else? It, it's 
it's a it's kind of surprising to me that somebody would actually do that. And, and there's only a couple of you, so we're, I'm preaching to the choir in this group because you guys get it. And uh, we look at the the oops, find your slide here. Make sure you see it. There we go. We look at the callback system as four targets to call back. And these four targets are quite simply league secretaries, the team captains from the previous year, the season's league bowlers, and I saw somebody uh, put up on this, sent, a, sent me a note inside the uh, the system here, said, don't forget about the dropouts. Dun, da, da, da. Uh, here you are. We um, league, the, the dropouts from the previous season are somebody you need to, you, you, they, even if they don't come back, they certainly tell you where uh, where you missed. Why didn't they come back? Some move away, some some some, but so much of it's under your control. And another comment from the the audience here, and it greatly greatly noted. Don't forget league presidents uh, and, and uh, league officials of president, league vice president, treasurers. Uh, it kind of goes into that category of the league secretaries, but that's true. Those league presidents, they kind of carry a voice. They obviously got elected to that position for a reason, and they not, are not a bad person to call. But we list league secretaries first. We, we actually say you should call them first and to let them know you're getting more uh, getting more involved in the league callback process and want to get some information. You know, simply state, Tell them that your staff will be calling team captains uh, that she or he has not called. And, and, and maybe if they've already called somebody, you don't have to call them again. But, you know, if they're not calling, now you can pick up to say, hey, who haven't you called? We'll help you out. We, we know you're a volunteer uh, and getting paid just a small amount by your league. Uh, but we want to help you out uh, based on the follow up calls. No doubt the person may feel that you took his or her territory on some of those people who are still doing it. But remember, it's your center, your mortgage, your business. Uh, and besides, uh, they're all your customers. So we want to make sure that we get the league secretaries on board to know that we're here to help. We're not trying to alienate them. We want to try to keep the league as, long, as big and large as we can. And it's not the same today as it used to be. We have to make sure we're doing everything we can. The next target down is, because you told your league secretary you're going to call them, is you're going to call the captains. And, and call the team captains and ask them if they're planning on coming back. Are they a full team? Are they coming back with the same teammates as the previous year? If the captain indicates that one team member isn't coming back, make a note. And be sure to call that person indicating uh, that you've, you're sorry they're not coming back. And maybe uh, you can find out what they can do, what you can do for them. You know, you can find out if the bowler wants to bowl in a different league. Is it a five-man team too many? Wants to bowl four? Maybe the season's too long. Wants to do a shorter season. Maybe there's something else you can get them into uh, instead of just saying, oh, we we lost Joe. Or, no, maybe there's other options. Maybe there's solutions. Maybe he just didn't like his teammates but didn't want to tell his captain that he just didn't like the rest of the team. He's just being a nice guy. Might share that information with you. So finally, then you would call the individual league bowlers. As I mentioned above, the, 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 the person calling, let me slide this screen here. It, it, the person making the calls to the secretary and team captain should be you, the owners, the general managers, the, the leadership within the organization. So now it shows that you're important, to, that they're important to you and you're taking the time. And, it, and it's not that many calls. And the next level of calls who should call back the next level is the person in your center with the most knowledge about that specific day part. If you've got a person who works during the days and knows every senior in your bowling center, that's the person that should be calling the senior leagues. They know them all. They know what size shoes they want to wear before they even walk into the door. That's the service you guys offer. That person should be picking up the phone and calling Alice and saying, Alice, you're coming back, right? Looking forward to seeing you and bringing them into the fold. You want to have that person who's familiar with your youth leagues calling all the youth. It can have some conversation going on and, and talking about what's going on. And if there's somebody who's familiar with your, your mixed leagues in the evening who works that Tuesday night, maybe you want to have them make some calls. 
that's an important piece to the puzzle is we often think that we have a, a sales team, but most of the centers don't. Remember, the majority of our proprietors in the BPAA are smaller than 16 lanes. So we know you don't have that sales staff. Well, how do we manage it? How do we prioritize who's doing what and who gets to who, who's going to do what? Well, that's real simple. You work the day shift, you're going to call some day leagues. You work the night shift, you're going to call some night leagues. You work that Saturday mornings, well, we're going to have you call those. Maybe you have a coach who's a volunteer help, uh, and also works at the center. Or maybe you can have some volunteers also calling them back. Got a few comments that have come in. I'm going to uh, read those off to you. They're not so much questions. They're actually input and help. I appreciate all of that. Before I jump into the uh, – uh, I'll show you a couple of things here I want to show you. But um, – it says, we've always held back the first week's fees out of the prize fund as a non-refundable deposit to help the commitment from each team in returning. So that is – John, I'm going to open up your mic. I'd like to hear what you, uh, what you mean by that. And let me find you here, John. I have unmuted you. Are you there, John? Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I am. Good day, everyone. Well, thank you for your, your comments. I appreciate you talking about the, the league presidents. Remind me of that. And also, what do you mean by the holding back of the week's fees for the prize funds? Explain that a little to us. Well, what I've always done is I've taken uh, about into the second from the last week of bowling, I pass out a form, ask them to return it. They say, yeah, what I do is, for example, our team, our week's fees are $16. So, and that's per bowler. So, four-man team. I hold back $64 out of the prize fund if they save it back, and that's it's really helped a lot. You know, we, it, it's kept my league 30, 40, 40 teams year after year. Oh, well, great. Makes sense. Yeah, it, it does to me. Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can forward them on to me, and I certainly can uh, can forward them back on to you. I appreciate the feedback and input. Um, Great. If anybody else has any feedback, questions, whatever, please forward those on to me. Either type them in or raise your hand, and I'll gladly um, uh, open up your mic and, and let you give some feedback here. I want to show you uh, a, a little something here real quick. This here is this uh, a little script that we already have as a download. It's in the download that I have listed on the on the the piece here. This has a script that you can actually kind of sample out to your employees that may not have done calls before, but there's a league secretary script for you, there's a team captain script for you, and then there's a league bowler callback script, and you can even uh, write down who it is and who they called and when. This is all formatted for you. And again, I mentioned just briefly already, if you're not using Customer Connect, you should be. Uh, it has all of this stuff built in for you. You can actually have all of that part of there for you. So where do I get this? For those of you who are watching this as a uh, video on the web after the actual session, if you go to the bpaa.com website and you just simply log in as a member, those of you who are members know that you can use your your, boat, your member number and the word password, BPAA, to get into this section. Now that I'm in here, you can go into here, oops, sorry, league, oops, membership, stay, league development guide, pretty well there. And there it is, the system of league bowling sections. There's our sections and uh, the, the communications today on our previous sessions are right here. But I also want to show you these samples. Here's a samples from all, there's 38 different files there for you to download, phone calls to potential league bowlers, there's the callbacks, all of that is in here, and I encourage you to use this. If you haven't already do it, done it, I encourage you to most definitely do that. And I have a couple more feedback, and then I'm going to let you go. Like I said, these are supposed to be quick-hitting sessions. Don't want them to take up a lot of time. But before I do get to those question and answers, I do want to make a point that due to my being out of town next week for the for a state show, um, I have to move the session to Wednesday. I hope that isn't too inconvenient for everyone. But note, it will be next session will be December 9th, Wednesday not uh, Tuesday, our final session of the year. Again, just 
25, 30 minutes of your time. And since, again, since you are registered for this session, those of you who are already here uh, are automatically registered and the date and time will be changed automatically within the system for you. Those of you watching it on video, please be sure to register and join us live so you can ask and add your questions also. Just wanted to go a couple more here. I have a couple more things. A uh, very good updated list of openings in leagues along with little description for the staff is so valuable. Singles and queries are just as important. Very good point. We're not talking just about the beginning of the league. If you've got some holes and keeping that updated list, it has to be updated every day. That list grows and shrinks, and that goes all year long. That's a very good point, and I thank you for adding that, Vicki. That is an important piece to filling those holes throughout the years. And now, now remember, we keep talking about the beginning of the league season, and really, uh, you should have that fall league season. You have a winter league season that starts in January, those mid-season leagues. And you can even have now with these new short season leagues, there's no reason why you can't have a spring season that moves right into the summer along with the summer season. So we, we really truly can have four seasons of leagues now with the shorter seasons going on with the eight for eights and the uh, bowling 2.0 programs feeding into these programs. And then uh, – one final, a couple more notes here. Great. You guys are really into it today. We're going a little longer than normal, and I love it. This is awesome. Um, you also need to not make too many calls to the same household. Uh, your database by phone number needs to be correct, and that's something Customer Connect absolutely does. That is a great point, Mark, and I can tell you as a person who had – Myself and my kids bowling in a league out when we first moved here to Texas, they called all three of us. I was like, really? You just called for my son. Can you just, could you not just covered it all at one time? That is a fantastic point, Mark. And I'm glad you brought that up because again, that is something when you're sorting with Customer Connect, it actually can sort by household so that it doesn't happen. Great point. And one final note as we're running out of time. Oh, he kind of hit it. The uh, As you have the short season leagues, make sure to use this for short season. But the great point that Lou makes is that you want to, you can use your dropouts to fill the short season and fill the holes. Somebody was a dropout last year, maybe felt the season was too long. You might be able to fill them later in the season with the dropouts because they felt the season was too long. Great points. Uh, thank you all. Any final questions, any final input, I would gladly take it at this time. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap it up and call it one more session. Thank you so much for your time and your input. The activity today was fabulous. Hope you're all having a great bowling season, and we'll see you in eight days right here. Thank you very much.